If you're there, say there. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished in all that were with him at the draught of the fish which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch me. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. You may be seated. Uh, listen, uh, today my message is not going to be as, as long as normal uh, because when we finish hearing what God has to say, then we're going to pray together. We're going to come down to the altar and we're going to seek God for his spirit, uh, for his spiritual gifts to become evident in our life, that he will expose them, seeking God, that he will remove the sin in our life so that we can move forward in our relationship uh, with him. Okay? Amen? Y'all with me? So, let's go. Uh, Jesus, he had many face-to-face -face encounters uh, throughout the scriptures. And one thing that we can notice that's synonymous with all of his face-to-face -face encounters, uh, they were all shook. Somebody shout, shook. shook. That's the name of our series that we'll be going through the book of Luke for the next few weeks or however long. Uh, God says, when he had face-to-face -face encounters with people, we can see that they experienced joy, uh, their joy was restored, they experienced hope, they experienced healing, uh, deliverance, they were in awe, they were in amazement, all these different uh, emotions were invoked from their face-to-face -face encounters with Jesus Christ. So that lets us know that when you have an encounter with Jesus, it's going to shake your life. You will leave shook. Wow. It, it doesn't matter. We had lame men come to Jesus and they left shook. We had blinded people have face-to-face -face encounters with Jesus and Mother Sherry, they left shook. What does shook mean? It means that it upset where you were currently in your life. It changed some things. The direction changed. The momentum changed. Everything around you was different when you had a face-to-face -face, -face encounter with Jesus Christ. Why? Because it would leave you shook. And the, this month, we're going to seek God that we encounter him in a way that we leave shook every time we come out of his presence. Wow. This series is not about your destiny. It's not about your business. It's not about you reaching your financial blessing. It's none, it's none of that. At some point, you just got to focus on your spiritual life, okay? At the beginning of the year, we talked about you. We motivated you moving forward and all of those things. But guess what? Now we're going to talk about moving forward in your spiritual life. We're going to have to leave where we are so that we can get to where God wants us to be spiritually and not just naturally. Yes. If you've had face-to-face -face encounters like those in the Bible, uh, there was always two parties involved in all of his face-to-face -face encounters. There was the, 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 the person of focus, and then there was the watchers. <laughs> and again, another thing that's synonymous in all of his face-to-face -face encounters was it was the person of focus that always left shook. It was the person of focus that always left change. It was the person of focus that always received the hope, that received the healing, that received the deliverance, that received the ability to get up and walk and continue on with life. But then there was also the watchers. They didn't get to experience being shook, but they were able to watch it. So the question is, if God hasn't shook you, if nothing has changed in your life, maybe you want to ask yourself the question, have I truly had a face-to-face -face encounter with Jesus Christ? It doesn't mean that everything in your life will be completely changed, but there was not one person that God spoke life to. There was not one person that God said your sins be forgiven. There was not one person that Jesus laid hands on that they left his presence completely the same way they were when they came. An encounter with Jesus, it will leave you shook. Today, the story, the star of our story is Jesus Christ. And his co-star is Simon. Most of us know him as Peter. Uh, you may know who Peter is, you may be familiar with him, and you may not, and many of us, when we think of Peter, we always think about the low moments in his life, right? We think about 
a time uh, where he cut somebody's ear off in rage, right? We think about that, and then we also think about uh, how he tried to rebuke Jesus because he thought he was handling his business, telling Jesus, no, nah, you ain't going to die. Basically, I rebuke you, and you, Jesus. We think about moments like that. We think about the moment when he ran from Jesus, when he was supposed to be the one that was his one of his closest, part of his entourage, his inner circle. But what did he do? He ran in the moment when Jesus was arrested. We think about moments like that. We think about the time where he denied Jesus, what, three times, and, and he cursed. We, we think about those things, but when you examine the totality of his life, we see that he actually had more high moments than he had low moments. So don't just think about all the bad things that he did, all the, 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 the situation that he found himself in that didn't represent Jesus Christ, but guess what? He was also monumental in laying the foundation for the church that we serve in today. He was the one that took over the mantle when Jesus went to heaven. He started the church in Jerusalem, which was the first church. He was the leader. He wrote two books in the New Testament. He lived for his calling, but guess what? He also died for his calling. Just hearing that short synopsis about Simon Peter's life, you ought to be encouraged. Why? Because you can see where you can start off, but you can also see where you can end up. And it lets us know and what should give us joy when we find ourselves falling short of the glory is that this is a lifelong journey and spiritual growth in the process. Look at somebody and say, spiritual growth in the process. I got at least three looking to neighbors because last week we didn't look at nobody's neighbor, okay? So I got two more left in the town. So his life, when we look at it from a whole, lets us know that spiritual growth is a process. Now, if we go to the text and look at our story on today, that first one, open your Bible because I want you to see this. Open your apps, if not look on the screen, because I'm, we're going to walk through these scriptures. I don't necessarily have any points on this morning outside of one main point that we'll get to. Uh, and it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genesaret. See, the moment I read this verse, what word jumped out at me? It was the word pressed. The word pressed. It, it jumped out of me to the point to where I had to look it up, Sharif. And, and when I looked it up, that word right there in the original language, it means to insist, it means to impede, and it means to force your way. So when you add that to the verse, what does it say? And it came to pass that the people, they impressed their way upon Jesus. They insisted on getting to Jesus. They forced their way to Jesus. Have you ever been in a season in your relationship with Jesus Christ where you feel like there was something between you and Jesus Christ? Have you ever been in a place where you feel like there was something blocking you? You know, you got a desire to get to Jesus, but the feeling's not there, the emotion's not there, the drive is not there, the passion is not there, but I think that the people that were there on that morning to get to Jesus should encourage us to say, you know what? You're going to have to press your way sometimes. Sometimes you're going to have to insist on getting to the feet of Jesus. Sometimes you're going to have to press your way. It doesn't matter what you feel like. It doesn't matter what your emotions. It's okay. You ain't got to get with me. I'm still going to preach like it's a thousand people on fire up in this place. Sometimes you're just going to have to move, and move the stumbling blocks. It don't matter. You're going to have to press your way to get to Jesus. And because they pressed their way, the Bible tells us that what? That Jesus conceded that he gave in to, he made concessions for them. And when we go to verse 2, and he saw two ships, what? Standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them, washing their nets, and he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, which is Peter, and he did what? He prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. So we see from the text that there were how many boats? Good. Three people know how to read. Okay. God bless you. In the name of Jesus, learn to read. How many people were in the boat, Kiara? There were two people in the boat, and he had a choice. And I don't believe that it was just a coincidence that he chose Peter's boat. I believe that this was just the beginning process. Why? He had to get to Peter. He, he had to get to Peter. He had to get in the boat so he could have access to Peter. Why? Because Jesus' plan was to call him into ministry. Wow. Jesus' plan was to put him in a position to where he could fill him with the Holy Ghost and so that he could be, so his spiritual gifts could come forth and that he could be prepared and trained for the next three and a half years so when Jesus left, he could fulfill his mission on earth. Guess what? You may not be Peter, you may not be James, you may not be John, but guess what? God has a calling on your life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And every believer has been endowed with the spiritual gifts that come from the Holy Spirit. I wish I would have came to Bible study when we started this series on 
on Thursday night. I had no idea, Casey, that it would connect to Sunday morning, but we're going to go somewhere in this series. You have the gifts inside of you, but guess what? Jesus has to be invited in the boat first. Yes, man. Yes, sir. Yes. Listen, he asked Peter, could he get in the boat? Help us. Wow. And what did Peter do? Peter let him in. The problem with many of us is when Jesus comes knocking, what do we do? We won't let him in. Not every area of our life. You're like, I'm a believer. I'm saved. But guess what? We got different compartments in our life. Yes, sir. And yes, sir. many of us, we have off-limit compartments in our life. We got signs that say off-limits. Yes, sir. You know, yes, Jesus, <laughs> I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior, but, you know, there's just some areas you yeah. can't touch. Yeah. You can't touch. Amen. And sometimes you, you, you single. You remember I've been there when I was single. You're Amen. Like, you know, God, you can have my life. You can have my time. I'll come to Bible study, but don't, don't mess with my relationships now. <laughs> Tell the truth. God, you're going to try to give me somebody I don't want. <laughs> so let me, let me handle the relationship side of things because I know what I want. I know what they need to look like. Kiara, I know they need, I know they need to have some muscle. They, they need to be shaped like that brother back there with all the muscles and all that. They need tall and they need long hair.
The fisherman was gone. They were washing their nets, and then he entered in. If you know me by now, you know I'm not a coincidence type guy, especially when it comes to the Bible and Jesus. I do not believe that it was a coincidence <laughs> that Jesus waited <laughs> until the fishermen were gone. Right. Because if you look at the other Gospels, when it tells a, a, a short version of this story, it says that Jesus saw them while they were fishing. <laughs> Which means he saw them out there fishing with a boat full of people and then they got back, and then he chilled for a little bit <laughs> until the people got off. Uh -huh. Like, okay, one, wait, let me get off, 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 let me get off. Mm. And he said, okay, let that by himself now. Let me make my move. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that that was a coincidence, uh -huh. but I believe that. For God to manifest himself in the way that he wanted to in Peter's life at that moment, he had to get Peter in a state of loneliness. Wow. Wow. Being alone. So let me, let me holler at the person right now. Do I got anybody in the video? You to raise your hand, but you feel alone right now. <laughs> you, you feel alone. You come to church and you still got this alone feeling. It's not like you're not connecting with people. Wow. You're going to lunch with people. You're going to dinner with people. You're still hanging out. You're still talking on the phone with people. But yet and still, there's this loneliness that you feel wow. on the inside. And you're questioning God like, God, why do I feel like this? Should, shouldn't I feel so full right now? Now, shouldn't I feel so loved and, 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 and so happy right now? And I got the people around me, but it just seems like God, like, like you're, you're forcing me to feel lonely right now. It could possibly be that God has you in that state because he wants to do something in your life that he just can't do when you're surrounded and consumed with a lot of people in your inner space. So don't despise the lonely seasons, but embrace it and just shout, God, whatever you can just go ahead and do it. Whatever you want to bless me with in this lonely season, go ahead, God, and bless me like you never blessed me before. Embrace the season of loneliness. Stop complaining and crying about God. I ain't got no best friends. <laughs> I'm looking on Facebook and I see all these people with best friends, God. Where is my best? I don't want, I want to be your best friend in this season of your life. I'm the one you need to come up because when I give you a best friend, you're going to be sharing all your problems with your best friend. You're going to forget all about me. You're going to be asking your best friend for all the advice. You're going to forget all about me. So he said, before I send you somebody like that, I need to make sure you know who's going to be with you through the thick and the thin. I need you to know who's going to be with you when nobody else is around you. Embrace the season of loneliness, April, and just let God do what you do in the season of life. We just have a Bible study this morning, okay? That's what happened because y'all won't come out on third. You gotta have Bible study. <laughs> Look at somebody in my second one and say, we gotta have Bible study. <laughs> because you won't come out on Thursday night. <laughs> Listen, God can do much with little. Without even realizing it, Hallelujah. Peter was playing a role in God's will in heaven being done on earth. But we don't know for sure what Jesus told those masses of people who were pressing to hear him, but he had something to say. Yeah. Because if he didn't, he would have just let them go. It wouldn't have been the first time that people was following him and he fed them and then let them go because he was done for the day. But obviously he had something specific for them to say that morning. And when he got in the boat and Peter lent him his boat, Peter was playing a role in God's will in heaven being done on earth through Jesus Christ in that moment. It may not have seen seemed like much at the moment. But I'm pretty sure later on he looked back and he was like, man, this boat, now, first of all, everything you have, God gave you. Yes, yes, you do know that, right? The job you have, the money, the business, the gifts, the talents, whatever they are, everything you possess, God gave it to you. So Peter probably realized, you know what, I got this from God, who am I to not let the prophet get up on here and, and do whatever he wants to do with it because I know who gave it to me. When we know who gave it to us, yes. whatever it is, your money, your gifts, your talents, your time, you have no problem lending it to God. And here's the thing where I want to encourage somebody who your gift and your talents may not bring you on the platform. It doesn't mean you don't have anything to offer. Yes. Why? Because Jesus, God the Father, he can do much with little. Yes, sir. Amen. So sometimes people get 
discouraged because they're like, I'm not a preacher. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't preach like pastor. So it definitely, you don't want to preach like me anyway. If you're going to have some high expectations of preaching, I can help you find some other people you want to be like. You don't want to preach like me anyway. I definitely ain't in there. But I can't sing like Lady Dana. God, no, God is using Dana every Sunday. I can't pray like Casey. Shoot. I wish God would give me a gift. God has some gifts. Yes, yes. And to be honest, if you come to Bible study, yes. you actually find out that yes. it ain't even a spiritual gift. Yes, sir. You actually find out that some of these things that you wish you had yes, uh, are not even really That's spiritual it. gifts. I ain't trying to upset nobody. Especially if somebody watching on YouTube, they're going right. to take a little clip of that and put it on there. <laughs> Just study the Bible. There's a gift inside of you, man. There's something that God can use. You just got to be willing to give it. Amen. And the Bible says that we're all one body, and every part of your body is necessary. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got to give it to you because I know y'all ain't coming back on Thursday. <laughs> every part is needed. I need that. The hand is necessary. You know how small your thumb is? <laughs> Some of you, you feel. Raise your hand if you feel like a thumb in the body of Christ. <laughs> There's somebody in here, brother, who they feel like a thumb in the body of Christ just because they're not a preacher or a singer or a teacher. Do you know how important this little thing is? Cut your thumb off. And let me see you grip that Starbucks coffee in the morning. I'm telling you, your life will completely change without your thumb. Talk about signing checks. You gonna have to do. You gonna have to use nothing but the debit card from now on. Yeah. There will be no more signing checks with no pens. There will be no more writing. No, no more. You gonna have to hold the cup with two hands and drink like a, a sippy cup like a baby with two hands. And then you'll realize how something that we took for granted, yes sir, as small as this thumb, yes sir, wow, how much impact it would have on your life. Yes if you didn't have it. So even if you see yourself as a thumb on an entire body, you need to realize that your thumb is important. You are important and God can use you. Nobody would have thought that God needed a thumb for his will to be done on earth, but he needed a boat that day. He didn't need a preacher. He didn't need a prophet. He didn't need a worship leader. He needed somebody with a dog. Say, God, you can have my house. Do whatever you want with it. You can have my money. Do whatever you want with it. You can have my wife. You can have my husband. You can have my car. Whatever you want to do with any one of those items, God, I give it to you. What would happen in this church if we could just get 20 people, 25 people to say, God, whatever I have, I lend it back into the kingdom. Back to the kingdom. Y'all ready to get into the sermon? All right. That's my intro. First of all, now when he had left speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your net for the drought. Somebody shout, launch into the deep. Launch into the deep. Verse 5, and Simon answering said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes. Look at the miracle they're experiencing right now. And their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and they filled both with the ships so that they began to sink. What did Jesus tell Peter to do? Y'all got short term. <laughs> he said, launch into the deep. And Peter was hesitant at first. You know, he was like, hey, come on, Jesus, we just did this and we was out all night long and we didn't catch nothing. So ain't no way we're going to catch nothing in the daytime. That's just not the best time right now. So he was hesitant, but yet still, what did he do? He went on, he obliged to Jesus' request, and he launched into the deep. And what happened as a result of him launching into the deep? He got to experience Jesus' work a 
miracle. We're going to put this together now, okay? I want to look at, this is the message. I want to look at three positions that Peter was in in this text, okay? Three positions that Peter was in in this text. So if you got your Bibles back out, let's go back to see. Uh, DeAndre, go back to verse uh, 2. And they saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them, and they were washing their nets. So what position was Peter in at that moment? There were three locations that Peter was in, the three positions that he was in. I'll give them to you, and then we can talk about them. One, he was at the bank. One, at one position, at one state, Peter was at the bank. The second position he was in, he had thrust out a little. He, he had thrust out a little. So, first position he was in, he was where? He was at the bank. The second position he was in, he was where? He had thrust out a little. And then the third position, if you catch catching on, where was he? He had launched out in the deep. Yeah. Now, let's, let's, let's look at these three positions and let's find out where you could possibly be and find out where we need to go. It's hard to go somewhere when you really don't know where you are. Right? Because if you want to get to Arlington, where do you need to go? You can go 114 this way. But guess what? If you're not on this side of town, you will lose a whole lot of time, and it may not even be worth it to go 114 east if you wait on the other side of Dallas, right? So we're going to look at these three positions that he was in. One, what was the first one? He was where? He was at the bank. So he was at the bank. The boat was parked, or docked, rather, for my fishermen out there, Lindell. Uh, on the dock is where he met Jesus. Yeah. On the dock is where he met Jesus. At that point, he hadn't, there's no scripture that said that he personally met Jesus. But we do know that he had heard of Jesus. Yes. We, we do know that from Samaria, so we know that he had heard of Jesus, he had heard about a miracle uh, at the beginning of his ministry. We knew that John the Baptist had baptized him, so they were around there, so they knew, they knew who Jesus was. Peter knew who he was, but he didn't have a personal relationship with him. He had never actually encountered him personally. There was no face-to-face -face experience wow. Wow. while he was dot. Where? At the bank. Huh. <clears throat> that was his first position. And I think that represents the state of being an unbeliever. Yes. Pre-salvation. <laughs> So if you're in here, you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You've never made him the Lord of your life. You're in a position in a state where you're at the bank. You're, you're a dot at the bank. You're here, so you heard about Jesus. <laughs> but hearing about Jesus doesn't mean you've got a personal relationship with Jesus. You, you know about Jesus. You can, you can quote things that he said. You can talk about things that he did. You can talk about he's a miracle worker and he's a way maker and he can open blind and eyes and he can be a lawyer in a courtroom. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? You, you can talk about those things. Come on, sir. But, but all you can do is talk about other people's experience because you're on the bank wow. dot, but you never met in person. Wow. So Peter was on a dock, never had met Jesus, but he heard about him. And then what happens after that? What's the second state, the second position, or the second state that he was in? What? Thrust. He had thrust out a little. That's in verse 3. When he thrust out, at that point, where is Jesus? Jesus is on the boat. <laughs> now he finally, he's met Jesus. They've encountered, they met, they're connected now. I love that word, little. To see what it actually meant uh, in the Greek in that verse. And it meant few. Somebody say few. few. It meant short. short. It meant light. Few, short, and light. So at this point, Peter's not at the bank. He's thrusted out a little bit, but he's still in a shallow place. That's good. That's he's in a shallow place. So I call this the same state. You say it. <laughs> You made a commitment to Jesus Christ. You're a believer. You've left the bank. Now you're thrusted out. 
Jesus is in the boat. It's not a question of if you're saved. It's not a question of if you know Jesus. He's with you. If you die right now, you're going to make it into heaven. But you're in a shallow place. Wow. wow. So let me highlight the person who feels like you're just content with being saved. But if all Jesus wanted us to do to get saved was get saved, then what would he have done? The moment we got saved, he would have snatched us out of here. Wow. Wow. He, he would have took us. The moment we came back to the altar, our bodies would have dropped and our souls would have been in heaven for eternity. Yes. But he left us here. Because he had work for us to do. Yes, sir. He left us here to build a strong relationship. He left us here to be a testimony, to be a witness unto those around us in our families, those in our city, those in our neighborhood, the entire world. He left you here for a purpose. Yes, sir. But just because you're saved doesn't mean you're exactly where Jesus wants you to be. Wow. Don't trip. He's happy. He's excited. We're going to get to spend eternity with you. But at this state, if all you are is just saved, you're actually living in a defeated state, in a defeated place. Because after you get saved, Satan knows, okay, I can't stop him from getting saved now because he already is saved. But what I can do is stop him from having a relationship, a pure, growing relationship with Jesus Christ. What I can do is stop them from being in a place where they can walk and use the spiritual gifts that God has given them. Because the Bible said that he gave all men, believers, spiritual gifts for the edification of the body of Christ. Yes, if I can stop them and keep them on the shadow end, yes. then God really can use them in the way that he wants to use them. And then the body of Christ is not edified in the way God wants it to be edified wow. Wow. where the person is. Wow. Listen, let me be honest with you. And let me, I know we got guests, but let me holler at my link church. And even if you're a member of another church, if this is you. Uh, you could be a hindrance to the church moving forward that God called you to be a part of. Wow. 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 Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. wow. They don't like that part. That's profound. That's profound, sir. Well, while you think about that, let me fix this. <laughs> because if the gift is in the house and it's not being used, on, then we're missing out on a piece of edification that we should be able to receive, which will cause more people to be saved, more people to be delivered, more oh, people sir. to be encouraged, more people to be motivated, and more lives to be changed. More people could be shook yes. if you could get out of the shadow. Come on, sir. Yeah. Come on, sir. So God could begin to use the spiritual Help gifts. Help us, sir. Help us. That's already on the inside. Glory, glory, glory. Yeah. So Peter, 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 in the second state, he was what? He was thrust out a little. We're saved, we have Jesus in the boat. The third place he was where? He was in the deep. He launched out into the deep. I looked up the word deep in the original version here, first here in the Greek. And then, ooh, this word is so power packed. It means fullness. Shout fullness. fullness. It means depth. Shout depth. depth. Shout immensity. immensity. And extreme degree. Extreme degree. So Peter went to a place that was extreme. <laughs> compared to where he was. <laughs> he went to a place that had some depth. <laughs> he wasn't just on the shallow ground where he could step out the boat and step and walk in. But he was in a place where he couldn't just step out anywhere he needed to be in a place of safety. He was in an extreme place. He was in a, a place of death. He was in a place that, 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 that was immense. He was full. He said that word means fullness. So he left the bank. He went to a shallow place and then at the his word, he launched out into a place of fullness, of depth, and extremes. That's the place wow. where God wants to take us. That's where he wants to take us. To a place of depth. Not a shallow state, but a place of depth. Okay, watch this. Watch this. Here's my main point for this message. When Peter had thrust out a little, catch this, pay attention. This is it. If you missed this, then you missed the whole thing. When Peter thrust out a little, he experienced Jesus' teaching. But when he launched into the deep, he experienced Jesus' miracles. Wow. Oh my God. Wow. That's it. First hand. Wow. That's the point right there. That's the whole, that's the message in the nutshell right there. That's what you got to leave with right there. That when Peter was in the shallow end, 
He was listening to Jesus teach. He received the word of God. It was good. It was encouraging. It was motivating. And then he would go home and be back at the same life if that was the scenario. But when he launched out into the deep, when he got to the fullness of Jesus, when he got into the extreme place, the place where people want to talk about you, the place where people want to say you're too deep, the place where people want to say you're too spiritual, you're too holy, you're too righteous, you think you're all over there in the bag of chips and Jesus Christ. Right. When he got there, yes. that's My when he experienced the miracle. That's good. And the point, summed up in short, is it's time uh -huh. to go deeper. Amen. Amen. That's good. That's good. That's, good. That's, good. That's the word God gave me. That's it. After Thursday night, we were talking about spiritual gifts. Friday morning, I was in prayer, and I told Dana after God gave me a specific word for the Link Church. It, it's, for any, it's for any believer. But specifically, he gave me word for Link Church, and I wrote it down, and I wanted to read it word for word. Link Church, are you in the building? Yes. yes. God said, it's time for the Link Church to go deeper. You've crawled long enough. You've been on milk long enough. You're almost four years old. It's time to start walking in your divine gifts. It's time to go deeper. That's good. That's good, Pastor. That's the word that God gave me four years old a, a, a Friday morning for the Link Church. At some point, the baby got to walk. Come on. At some point, the baby got to crawl, and then the baby got to walk. <laughs> and it's okay, because when the baby is little, you got to give them formula. Sometimes you want to give them meat, but they're not ready for it. But then at some point, wow. the baby has to come off the formula, yes. has to come off the breast milk, and you have to give them meat yes. Yes. so he can keep growing. So God told me Friday that the Link Church wow. is at a place and at a state where you're going to have to come off the milk, where you're <clears> going to have to come and get on the meat. In other words, it is time for you as members of the Link Church or at the body of Christ here, wherever you are, to leave the shallow state of just being settled for salvation and launch into the deep and realize there are some divine Holy Spirit given gifts on the inside of you that God needs to use in this city, in your home, in this entire nation. If we can get the people in the body of Christ, if we can get the people in the Lake Church to accept the divine gifts, then guess what? People will be healed at the Scriptures. 
over demons, whatever I have to flee, when you can speak. 